What's up, good people? Good people, how you doing? Welcome to Stock Up with Larry Jones. But it ain't just Larry Jones. Hey, hey, no, it ain't just Larry Jones. We got the Stock Squad. Hey, let's get some Tesla cats. Let's get some hearts. Let's get some coffee cups. And the gang is all here. We all lined up. Mo, I'm going to start with you. Go ahead and greet the people and say hello. Welcome back, family. It is so good to be back here. Thank you, Uncle Larry, for allowing me to be on the program with you on your channel. I look forward to this. Family, it doesn't get any hotter than when you got all four of us together. The energy is always spectacular. And man, do we got some things to talk about. Disney blowing up after hours. Tesla is always a hot topic. And what about those best stocks to buy now? Maybe a little crypto. Who knows? The day's wide open. And once again, no, thanks a lot, Larry. Put the Tesla cats in the chat. Make sure you put a mug for Uncle Larry in there, man. Let's do it. A little hearts out there. And of course, the oven mitts as well. I would appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keenan, go on ahead and greet the people. What's going on, everybody? Just know we got some banger stocks to talk about today. We just said, like Mo just said, Disney is on fire in the aftermarket. They just had their earnings. We heard about the guidance. We hear about AI, artificial intelligence. I know you're seeing these NVIDIA <coughs> plays and things like that going to 700. I know you're seeing Eli Lilly going to 700. And we just got to break all of this stuff down and make it make some sense and see where we can make some money in the market. However, we're not telling you to buy, hold, or sell. But we want to be transparent enough that you can see what we're doing and how we're making money and where we're actually putting our money where our mouth is. Talk to the people, Josh. Hey, hey, good people. All right. Well, so, you know, I wanted to talk about the Fed and cutting rates. So we I made some comments today that the Fed is not going to cut rates until June now. This is what people are speculating. It's not so much my opinion. Data could change this at any time. Everybody had been talking about March going into this year. And then right away, we got closer to March and they said, no, we're going to kick it down the road to May. As of today, the expectation for a cut in May has dramatically fallen below 40%. I think it was sitting at 38%. Now people are talking about June. Why? Because Q4 earnings 2023 has been going better than anybody expected. And the fact is we're probably going to need another round of earnings Q1 of 2024 to see if there's any kind of a change. Right now, the economy is doing well. We're seeing that because uh, big tech is gapping up and shocking us. I mean, honestly, 2023 felt like a rocket ship. 2024 was like, you know, as the saying goes, hold my beer, you know, and it's <laughs> flying you know and it's like you're looking at these things where we were going up twenty dollars now things are going up a hundred dollars and it just seems mm -hmm. unprecedented and in my video over on my page larry stocks with josh i posted a little bit of some of the things that are brewing under the water of the market sort of out of sight of anybody and that's the banking concerns moody came out and gave a downgrade and called one of these major banks a uh junk junk bond which means Bonds are something that these companies will sell their debt to the public. They're saying, if you are buying these guys' debt, it's worthless. They're never going to pay you back. Don't buy it, right? And so they're, put, they're, dropping, uh, they're dropping the herd on this company. And what that is one of the first signs of a major bank, a regional bank in the United States coming out with that kind of a problem, but it's the tip of the iceberg. So we have these brewing problems. China is still in trouble with their real estate. Uh, you know, there's the fact is, Larry, that they are essentially in the need of five trillion dollars is what's being speculated to prop up their stock market. And, you know, they want to put some money in, but nobody talked about five trillion dollars. And so even though as we're climbing and climbing and climbing and I'm not shorting anything, nor am I loading up on an inverse ETF, I am aware and keeping one eye open watching some of these things that are brewing. They're a big concern. There you go, man. That's the truth. That's the truth. Boy, you, Josh always come, man. Josh is like the long ranger. He comes with both barrels <laughs> loaded. He, <laughs> he come out blazing. So yeah. look, look, so like, uh, you know what? Let's just talk about it. It's funny that the three stock that I've been talking about, especially for those of you in the Patreon that I've been adding to my positions, Josh, was, I'm sorry, I got just me. All right, well, let's just go. 
I just been talking about Walt Disney has been one. Today I talked about DraftKings and, and I've been showing people that DraftKings, I just been loading up and Roblox. Look at Roblox up 10%, right? And uh, right. so I'm going to start out and then I want you guys each to take five minutes to talk about whatever you want the people to know. All right. I got this this new screen up. So I'm just trying to I'm going like this. All right. So what I want to say is this. I want to start out by talking about portfolios. Right. I want to start off by saying that every play is not an option. And I believe that these gentlemen will agree with me now. We're doing these options, especially in the Patreon. We're giving you guys our hot plays. And somebody says, I can hear you right now. What Patreon are you talking about, Larry? I'm talking about this Patreon, the Stock Squad. I'm talking about the Patreon slash Discord. I'm talking about where Stock Mo, myself, Keenan Grace, the, the light skin Keenan Grace right here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Stock <laughs> with Josh <laughs> and Keenan Grace. I'm talking about where we give you guys our full guidance and our hot plays in real time. I'm talking about that. That will be the top link in this video. I'm talking about that. All right. So I've been saying that every single play, even if you're doing an option play, you also need to see, is this a good time to be adding to my long term positions, right? Those of you that's been with Tesla, you know, when Tesla hit 175, that was for this, this period of time, that was a good place to be buying right now for this week. And Josh, I want, I want you to touch a, a little more about Tesla a little later, but I just want to front load this by saying that it is important for you guys to not just swing, or I'm sorry, not just do options, but add to your long-term positions. I showed the, my family today that in my DraftKings, in my $5 a day uh, DraftKings, I am up 150% with my DraftKings stock because I'm getting older now. I don't wanna be looking at my phone every five minutes wondering how much trouble am I because I'm at work and I go to lunch and I'm going, is my is my option blowing up? And so we want to do the options. We want to do the swing trades. But at the end of the day, where are you going to be five, seven, 10 years from now? Are you building your long term uh, portfolios up? All right. So now what I'm going to do, I want you guys to for another three minutes. Anybody, any any of you guys come in and talk about what I'm what I just talked about. Then we're going to have Mo. Mo, you talk about whatever you want the people to know about. Then we're going to have Keenan. You talk about what you want the people to know about. And then Josh, you come behind with that. So any of you guys got anything to add to what I just said? Well, let me just uh, throw something out regarding Disney. All right. And this is really um, not a, uh, you know, hot alert, but it's just kind of funny. You know, I had a hard time reading Disney. I told everybody that I wasn't selling a single share. My strategy is to sell covered calls and puts on my Disney. I accumulated at a great price. Uh, you know, I was a heavy advocate for buying when it was hitting those lows. And a lot of people were able to follow and gain uh, gain some traction with that. But a friend of mine just sent me a, uh, um, a screenshot of a post. And I'm going to read it to you. And I'm going to tell you guys why I'm having trouble with Disney. I guess Elon Musk... Um, uh, posted this. He said, Disney's considering Ayo Edebiri as replacement for Johnny Depp in Pirates 6. Now, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Disney is reportedly considering Ayo Edebiri for the leading role in Pirates 6, a film that would feature a younger cast of pirates in search of hidden treasure. So, you know, they're, they're doing things, let me see, they're doing things that would be unexpected to the fans. And that's why I'm having a hard time. This could be a joke. I don't even know. It could be real news, but because Disney's doing things that are so unexpected, I don't really know what their brand is anymore. I think Wall Street showed us today that they're forgiven. Wall Street is showing us today that the books are going to be back in order. John, that the, the CEO is doing a great job 
and that things are improving and they're on course. Wall Street doesn't care about the messaging or the culture of the company. They only care about the profit margin. And so this push up that we saw today, we're above the 100 EMA, we're pushing through layers of um, resistance. They're telling us the company's in order, which really means that this thing can continue to climb from here. I looked at a quick target. I saw it at around $120. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm in at a great price. I'm holding. Not sure if I'm going to be adding just yet. I want to give it a couple of days, uh, but the company confuses me because I, as a consumer, really don't even know what the brand is anymore. Interesting. All right. So, what do you think? Uh, what do you think? Go, go right into Tesla. Go right into well, Tesla. Go ahead. Okay. So, you know, someone asked me in the Discord today about Tesla. If there was any chance that it could come back to 182 to $184 range. I got no idea if they're in some puts and got stuck or what, you know, they're wanting to accumulate. And I said to them that it is possible, okay? Now, I think that we've had a, a, what I would consider a classic reversal on so many different technical levels, right? We have a massively oversold RSI on the daily time frame. We're above a critical area of support, which was that 180. Even though we flashed down to 175 and one penny, which was the buy signal that I gave to everybody the last time that we did our live event, we came down and touched one penny above, 175 and one penny. We didn't close on the day below 180. And so this stock has not broken down. It's not signaling that there's more downside ahead. We've got to wait and see if it ever closes beneath that 180 critical support. As long as we stay above it, we should be fine. Now, we're going to be pushing up 190 and higher. And I think it's absolutely possible because here's, what, here's how I view it. The technicals are in order. It's the fundamentals that are out of order. The technicals are telling us that Wall Street's giving this company the benefit of the doubt. It's gone down enough. They're not going to push it down anymore until they get some news regarding the company's fundamentals. I think that the fundamental story that Wall Street's waiting on before they begin to pile back into uh, Tesla is Elon Musk's uh, compensation package. They're waiting to see if he is going to give this company 100% of his attention. I played a small clip from CNBC uh, 10 years back uh, when this compensation deal was put together and they were laughing and joking at how all of the stars would have to align for <laughs> Elon to have pulled off getting a dollar out of Tesla. But he pulled off what had to be viewed as the impossible and it would have been the biggest payday, 56 billion, it got shut down. Some people think it's it's politics, but until that gets resolved, for me, the technical trader, the fundamentals are out of order, and I think we may still come down and test some of the lower range. You know what? I uh, I agree with you. And to add to the FUD, now they here we go with the drugs. He's on drugs. He's on drugs. Um, and you're going to start to see a lot of FUD. Josh, you've been in sales just like I've been in sales. You know how it goes. Hey, if you hit this mark, we're going to give you a bonus, right? And then you hit yeah. that mark. And then what do they always do? They move they, the goalposts. Yeah, yeah, they was yeah. like, I didn't believe he was going to do it. And then when you do it, then they move the goalposts, right? And that's so unfair. Now, yeah, yes, he needs to focus. I believe that he needs to focus. But a deal is a deal. And that's not fair, right? Keenan, what you want the people to know? So I want to first comment on Josh's comment about Disney. And okay, say, let's, hey, let's, man, let's, can you back... Can you bag off Listen, just a hair I'm on, with the I'm on, uh, my mic? mic. All the way out of my hand. Just Listen, a little Josh. bit. Good. Listen, don't you talk down on Disney. We ain't having that. Now I'm playing with you, Josh. I, I agree with you totally. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you totally, Josh. I'm telling yeah. you the truth, man. Listen, I don't know what is up with the branding on Disney. And this is why I tell people, you got to have, and I, I'm not your financial advisor, but I want you to just really understand here when you're dealing with people who are dealing with real money in the stock market, I'm talking about your hard earned cash. You got to say, hey, am I going to have this stock for 10 years? And if so, Disney been around for like a hundred years. If a company starts to change fundamentally, yep. then you have to start thinking about if you want to still hold on. And I say this, Disney, they catered to children and they catered to kids for years. And now, they started to do some political stuff that people are like, I don't know if I want to bring my kid to that movie and see that. So right. when you encounter this, it's kind of changing the core 
of their audience and the audience you do not want to be surprised when you take your kids to the movies when you take your kids to the theme parks so then to avoid that people will not go okay we look at disney and then we see that they are trying all kind of new things rather than at least sticking to some of their cores where hey we make things for kids we make things kids friendly family friendly now they're trying to i don't know who they're trying to cater to to be honest with you so since we don't know fear uncertainty and doubt will prevail in a company like disney until they kind of clear clear it up they bought marvel they were killing it with that for a while and now it's kind of deteriorating you've seen jonathan majors who was going to be kang basically the new thanos he's he's uh going through court related things you see the star wars movies they were didn't do so hot so now people are confused about what's going to happen with marvel they're confused what's going to happen with with star wars we don't know what's going to be the future of disney so with all of that being said, that could be true with any company. Walt Disney died so long ago. Companies move forward. There's going to be a day where Elon is not at Tesla. Is it going to be in your lifetime? Who knows? But since you you know these things, this is why people put the foundation of their portfolio in the S&P rather than trying to ride out the wave with something like Disney. They went all the way up to, I want to say, $170 a share from start all the way through the whole history and then after that they came back down to 100 and people are pumped that it went from 80 to to 90 to 100 it used to be 170. what happened they changed their core and now they're paying a price behind it and i don't want this to happen to you getting too in depth into any one individual company the s p 500 hit an all-time high today and i always tell everybody this it's a joke but it's not a joke if you ever hear the s p 500 hit an all-time high just know in the back of your head, Keenan is richer than he's ever been because my foundation, <laughs> think of it like a building. <laughs> Wait a minute, say that again, Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, but it's not a joke. If you ever hear the S&P 500 hit an all time high, just know Keenan Grace is richer than he ever been. Can I, help, can I hold something? Can I hold something, Keenan? It's like, think of a building. Bucks. The foundation is on the bottom. <laughs> if you raise, if you raise the floor, you raise the floor everything above it raises too yep so then every time you hear about that floor raising you know that everything in my portfolio is shooting to the sky so then i want that same thing for you and i don't have to worry now about man what if apple decides that they're getting out of the cell phone game they're getting out of the tech game and now they're selling actual manzanas aka apples they sell apples now so i don't know if i want to be in that kind of company you know what i'm saying what if they start selling cheeseburgers at apple and they give up tech they changed the core of the company, and I don't know that I want to be there, but it, could this happen in 50 years? Who knows? Could it happen in 10 years? Who knows? But I'll hold them as long as they stay down to their core. So when you see things like this, and you know what? I want to actually switch gears. I want to ask everybody the question in the comments, because I meant to ask as soon as I got on. Have you ever been in a stock? Tell me yes or no in the chat. And shout out to Marco for that super chat. Marco, so have, tell me, I appreciate tell me yes you, Marco. Or no in the chat. And this is the question that I pass it on. Have you ever been up on a play, whether it be a stock, an option, a future, Forex, or something like that? I'm talking about 30% up and then still lost. Has that ever happened to you? It came right back down and you lost money on that. And I wanted to just ask you, yes or no, tell me that in the chat. Because you got to remember to get out if you see it coming back down and about to hit where you entered in. If you got in at 100 and it went up to 130, there's no reason for you to lose. There's no reason for you to lose. If you see it come back to 120, 110, oh yeah, I'm letting this go. You understand what I'm saying? You can always get back in. So I wanted to just leave you with that. Mo, yeah. what you got? What you got that you want the people Ooh. to know about? I know you loaded, bro. <laughs> Listen, ah, throw it up there in the main screen, Uncle Larry. I'm going to pull up some, some information here. Go I ahead, it's all yours. Tesla. Uh, you know, I love, I love my Tesla. All right. And I, I hear all the FUD out there and it's always amazing to me how the entire industry, the news industry, everybody likes to attack a company, Elon, all at the same time. And, it, and it's amazing how they'll come out and absolutely just praise them when the stock's at an all time high. When it's at an all time high, everybody, oh, it's like they get the press machines to push it up a little more before they pull the rug out. But when we're down low like this, the retail investor, they see a stock that the, 
a lot of us are in getting pummeled down to a very extreme level all of a sudden well then the news all starts coming out these stories start coming out and you see the stock getting pushed down just a little bit more and you know what usually happens at that point well i'm going to show you what usually happens so what i got here is two, a tale of two cities your favorite not that you can really see it here but this is tesla right here down 24.49 percent year to date family this is only about six weeks this got hammered so far and then we got the nasdaq up 6.71 a difference between them of 31 percent like keenan said if, if the s p ever gets up to a new high know that he is loaded and keenan i need 20 bucks if you got 20 bucks <laughs> i can borrow i would greatly appreciate it you may take me out of the city but i still know how to hit up a guy that has the money <laughs> so with that being said i wanted to pull up tesla's chart here and i'll try to center this so everybody can see thank it. you now this is the uh this is what we're looking at this is on the daily candles family i put this out here i i talked about this in the videos and look at this look how i'm scrolling i'm crunching this thing up here so you can see what do you notice family you notice that up here where we have all this positive stuff here these are the highs everybody loves elon tesla's the next banger boom down we go to the lows oh he's terrible tesla's done it's going to 100. up it goes back up to the twos mid twos down it goes again notice the channel it is so well formed family i do, i can't i don't make the lows and highs but we can connect them and look where we're at right now the same situation family everybody's just throwing everything they got at old uncle elon and the, the truth of the matter is and you can check on the numbers for the exact numbers but aren't last time i looked isn't tesla still making seven thousand dollars gross profit per car so when everybody out there is bashing bashing tesla yep. and you got to understand there's more to the game than just this stock price they are manipulating what they want to do you got people out there that want to load the boat with tesla who will talk negative about it to get it to the price they want and then all of a sudden you start seeing positive articles coming out because they got their position retailed sold out they got scared they ran for the woods and then all of a sudden tesla starts to rebound and i showed you this chart once again look at the lows you can see we've been down here a couple of times and every single time we have bounced off look the major line in the sand around 175. uh that's where i see a major support but where could we go back up to the mid twos i like tesla i think it has a lot of possibilities obviously they're still making let me say it again family seven thousand dollars gross profit per car now I, I could be off you guys can double check that uh you know as margins get tighter and they talked about one other thing let me pull this up tesla asked which jobs are critical stoking layoff fears family this is one of the biggest stories out there you know what happens when a company gets out there and tightens the belt we're yep. not going to thanksgiving and having ham we're not having turkey we're not having steak we're going to have a can of spam because it's time to tighten the belt and That's cut it. the fat off of the company we are going to make this company more profitable people are going to lose their jobs it's absolutely horrible we see this coming you know the fed has raised rates elon came out and said if they continue to raise rates companies are going to go under he said that many many times before the fed actually continue to raise rates and now you're going to see it happen because it takes six to 12 months for that to kick in he knows what's going on he's tightening the belt but you know what happens to the stock after they do cut that belt and they come out an earnings call and all of a sudden the margins are a little better profits up a little bit because they did that the stock takes off i've seen it before look at meta go back to meta when it got collapsed down and they started tightening the belt look where it's at now i can see this happening with tesla that's all hey. I got for you, Larry. I, I like it. I like where it's going. I am now a bull on Tesla for the longer term. I am too. That's a great point. And my my what I want to say to people are when were were you loading up when it dropped down below 180? Not loading up. Were you buying? Right? right. So you right. guys know I was talking about Roblox, right? I was talking about Roblox and and I I said it on my video yesterday. 
I'm buying. I said, I'm buying more now. And then I also said on DraftKings, I said, I'm buying more now. And on Disney, I showed my portfolio. I says, I'm buying more now. I, that was yesterday. I said, if they knock the ball out of the park, then I'm going to buy 15 more shares. But if it tanks, I'm going to buy 30 more shares. Hear what I said. But I actually bought more. So what I was saying was, it's under $100. It's a buy. And the fact, I just believe, these are not facts. I believe that Meta showed everybody how to literally pull a company from the brinks of death and turn it around. They said, hey, we lost our way. We want to get back. And I've been saying it on this show with the four of us. We need to get back to our core customer and our core values. And that's what Mark Zuckerberg did. Then he iced it with a dividend on top of that. Tesla, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Disney will have to do that. They're, they have to get rid of. And why are we letting the crazies drive the bus anyway? Why, why are we letting Mark? <laughs> why, why are we letting the crazies drive the bus? Have you uh. noticed that? We we I mean, it's like we like we got Ray Charles at the wheel. Right. With Steve <laughs> Wonder giving him directions. Why? We uh, crazy for letting the crazies drive the bus. That's all. I'm, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to come out and say it. All right. Hey, I like this comment right here because this is true. It said, Uncle Larry, uh, thank you so much. I started watching you in 2020 and told my husband that this guy is a fake but still kept watching you. And then what you do, you bought VOO, you dollar cost average 2K every month and have made a lot of money. Well, thank you for, uh, T.O., thank you for sharing that. Because all of these little hit jobs that I have, I can't tell you how many people told me that they came to my page because somebody was actually thinking the same thing or and then they wind up making money, right? And Tio, how much did it cost you? How much did I charge you? Goose egg, because the fact that you making money is good for me. All right. YouTube will take care of me with these commercials. Y'all know how this goes. And and but if you guys keep making money, you guys keep coming back. That's what I like. Hey, Keenan, I want you to get something about DraftKings uh, um, uh, up. All right. I want you to get ready to talk about DraftKings. Why? Because DraftKings is going to report, I believe it's next Thursday, that I believe that they're going to report. Now, every so far, every company that I said I'm buying so far has come out with positive earnings and they have been going up. If you notice all of these other earnings, I don't talk about them. I was like, hey, I'm not in. I'm sell the news, buy the rumors, sell the news. But on these, I felt strongly about. And um, and they're all performing. Let us know what's happening with DraftKings there, Keenan, and because it's coming up uh, next week. Right. So I did a video on this yesterday. I forget the exact details of the whole video, but I do got some notes right here that I took down. So DraftKings, right, on February 15th, 2024, they're going to have their earnings. We're going to hear a lot about what's going on with have they been making money. Now, I got to ask everybody a question again in the chat. Have you ever heard of a parlay? Have you ever heard of that? So if you starting to hear this term come up, even if you didn't understand it, a lot of people are betting on sports games. We're talking about the NBA, the NFL, whatever. They're betting on all kinds of sports. And people are, and it's reinvigorating the sports industry because people are betting on it so hard. You remember how they were doing like the stand up, kneel on your, uh, get on your one knee or whatever during the pledge and everything like that? Or LeBron James, he was wearing, uh, different kind of political kind of stuff on his jersey and people was mad at the NFL mad at the NBA everybody was boycotting everything guess what people care more about money than they do about their morals overall so people who said they wasn't gonna watch the NFL or the NBA they started to see that they can make some money sports betting and a lot of people are losing too let's be real guess what they threw all of that political stuff out and now the ratings are going back up on these sports and then a Super Bowl is coming, I want to say, February 11th or around that time. DraftKings is expected to potentially make billions of dollars. But one of their executives, he actually jumped ship and went to a competitor. And allegedly, supposedly, hypothetically, he's bringing all of the secrets over there. So then they're, 
<laughs> they basically going through some drama for your mama family. So I want you to keep an eye on them. But what does this tell us? Don't look at them fundamentally. They too caught up in the, in the politics, right? The government is going to be able to dictate if they can run or if they can't run, kind of like with EVs, but maybe even worse. They already got some drama going on internally. So what do we look at DraftKings like? Like a trade, a short-term in and out trade, not an investment. So when I look at DraftKings right now, I want to give you some hard numbers, right? So we, we hear the story, we hear the drama going on with them. DraftKings, and let me just look it up. So I'll pull up the technicals for you because I have it loaded. DraftKings at the time of this recording is about $42, right? $42 in the after hours, $42.71. It has the potential now since it's holding above the 42. If we open up at 42, let's call it tomorrow, and we kind of hold that, I'm looking for this thing to go to like 48. It doesn't mean that it will for sure because, remember, the Super Bowl is coming up. They're going through court cases and drama, so the news could take it back down. But I'm looking for this thing to actually continue to pop because so many people are trying to get in and make some money. And here's a quick little story, one minute or less. A guy recently, he put in $5 and he made like $500,000. He bet it's called the 14 leg like parlay where he bet basically 14 things were going to happen and they all happened. And he turned $5 into over $500,000. And this stuff is like on the mainstream news. And what does it do? It draws in more people. But again, if you have, and I want to just be responsible here. If you have a gambling issue, go ahead and seek help. I know it may sound like a challenge or it may sound like a joke, but I'm totally being serious here. I want you to really go and seek help. And it's not that you can't gamble, but you got to make sure you're doing it responsibly. If you do decide, don't gamble your rent money. Don't go and gamble anything that you need for food or bills or anything like that, or your life savings. Make sure that you're doing anything like that responsibly. Or if you can't handle that, that's okay too. Just don't do it. That's cool. That's cool. Hey, someone asked... Go ahead, uh, uh, Josh. When you're done, I got something on crypto I want to talk about. Okay, I've, I'm going to shift to crypto uh, in a minute, right after I talk about this, and then I'm going right to crypto. Somebody asked about Ford. Let me tell you guys this, and, it, I'm, and it's going to come right back to Tesla. Ford reported their earnings, and then Toyota, Toyota had an, a, a call, and for Ford actually is killing it right now. If you look here, as you can see, Ford had a good, uh, earnings, right? And, and, and forward guidance. What did both of them talk about? EVs. Even though they are losing money, thousands of dollars per car, they were the most excited about what? EVs. Because the margins at what, at which they are losing money on the EVs are going down. And what, what's happening is their hybrids are going up, Right. And so people are not ready to go full, but they're dipping their toe in. But they also notice that the younger generation is going more towards EV. So what is that telling you, man? It's so easy to me. I could see that with my third eye that right now is the time to be starting to get your positions in the EV market. Because just five years from now, just think about this. If you have a 14 year old in the house. Guess how old he's going to be in 10 years, old enough to be buying his second car. Right. So you got to think about that when you're thinking about long term stock, long term positions. And just before we switch, I want to show people this because it's very important that we understand um, uh, all of the moving parts about building uh, wealth. Look at this. Now, I showed this earlier on my page. This is what I want you guys to see that are just doing options, right? Look, so far, I'm up. Look at this, Roblox. What did I buy today? Roblox. Yeah, as you can see, I bought it today, 11%. I'm up 11%. Palantir, how much am I up? You can see that. You guys see that, right? DraftKings up 150%. And I, I threw a little Cleveland Cliffs in there because that's concrete, right? Now, this is one of many of my dollar cost average or $5 a day. All right. Just like the person that said I was a fake. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, they were nice for, for those of you that's just coming on. What I'm saying is while we're making this money, we got to look at, read the tea leaves and we got to see what's happening, right? 
So I want you to go back and listen to Ford's earnings and look at the uh, the amount of focus they put on EVs. Mind you, they are losing money on every EV, but their entire focus is on for the future is on their EV growth. And so is Toyota. So just know that you don't buy it when it's run up. You buy it when it's beat down. Now we're going to shift to crypto. All right. So what we're going to do is, Josh, I'm going to let you go because I promised everybody I made a bold statement and I got to discuss it before we end. So I'll probably be the last one to talk. My bold statement was that it's easier for me to make money in crypto than it is with the stock market. And I know that's a big, bold statement. Right. But Josh. I am going to let you go ahead and take us into crypto. You want to throw me up, Larry? I got screen? you, man. It's just taking a minute. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, let me just kick things off. I'm going to go over a couple comments uh, that we got in the chat. Lynn Lee said, stocks suck and old. Crypto the best. Well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, crypto the best. We weren't even talking, you know, about no crypto at the moment. But um, <laughs> then later on, uh, I got a question here regarding from Maurice: What phase are we in crypto? Bear distribution, accumulation, markup, or bull? Those um, he's added a couple uh, there, but yeah, basically, yeah, I like in accumulation. Okay, so we are still yes. in the winter of accumulation. And even though we, we move up and down in that period, but we're, we have yet to begun the markup phase. A lot of people believe the markup phase is at the having event in April of 2024. That's when the party gets started. And then I wanted to talk. So right now, crypto's cooled off. Okay, Bitcoin's come down. Some of the alts are, are, are making higher highs. I have a bold prediction on my page today, Stocks with Josh, that the meme coins, people are discounting them and forgetting about them, but they always move last. And from my uh, point of view, when they move, it, you know, it, it's in conjunction with maybe another uh, lower high from Bitcoin. But at that point, once you see the, move, the meme coins break out, it's shortly after that that we get that capitulation in Bitcoin. Somebody else asked about that. So this is when it's no longer sexy to be buying Bitcoin or the cryptos or coin or the miner. And I'm wanting people to get geared up to start thinking about actually when or if they're going to buy those. And I'm going to talk to you specifically about Coinbase today. And I'm just I pulled this up. I looked on my phone. This is just your Apple uh, news here. The first three articles on Coinbase. OK. Bitcoin ETF pose risk for Coinbase stock leverage shares says first article second article Coinbase global in financials losers CNN financial in gainers third article George Osborne joins Coinbase as crypto firm faces US court fight so right now guys it's not sexy but if you go back up to the price this thing uh hit 175 it looks like it hit 175 dollars it's down at 122 dollars and now it's cooled off and nobody's talking about it that's why it's important that we talk about it right now because under 120 dollars this is probably uh, starting to look pretty attractive to me because we're getting near some what i'd consider some bounce zones now the ideal price for me would be $100. But I can tell you that there's going to be like Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, Coinbase, and the miners, they're not going to stay down there. They're going to go down there pre-market, aftermarket, middle, you know, flash down, okay, and be back up. So if you don't have a buy order in on Coinbase at $100, and this is not a recommendation for what you should buy, sell, or hold. If I didn't have a buy order in on Coinbase at 105 bucks. I'd probably miss it, right? At the moment, whenever I see the top three articles for any stock are all FUD and it's come off of its high, that's actually when you want to consider getting a little bit of excitement. We are not in the markup phase yet, guys. All right, all right. Uh, Keenan, uh, Mo, what do you got to say about crypto? Well, I got to tell you something. 
you guys know, and my dream, Lair, has been to become a crypto millionaire. Wait a minute. And you got a dream? It's, it's Black History Month. I got Month. a dream. You got to say, I have Perfect a dream. Job. I have a dream. <laughs> and it is it is to hit that million dollars worth of crypto someday. Yes. For those who follow, you know I dollar cost average into Ethereum every single week every monday i buy i haven't sold ethereum and i don't even know how many years it's been and i've been doing that for a long time i think all the way back to 2018 17 ish uh and so it's it's grown nicely since then now with that being said i have now accumulated three digits worth of ethereum and i continue to buy and we can take a look what's going on with the the, the, the ethereum what's what's happening you can see the move up. We broke down. We've been messing with this line of support, but Ethereum continues to do what it should do, $2,400 a piece. And I think we have a good opportunity to move even higher on it. And, you know, with that whole idea of Ethereum getting out there and hitting up to what, maybe 5,000? Are they going to be the next spot ETF out there after Bitcoin? I think the answer is yes. I think it happens in the next 12 to 18 months max. Uh, and so once that happens, I see 5,000 per Ethereum easily done once the SEC okays that spot ETF. So I, I'm a big fan. I think there's a lot of room to run with that. And deflationary, oh, remember, every time we have less and less Ethereum in the market and overall, as it comes more and more popular and more utility, this is huge, folks. And so I would say keep your eyes open. One of the best opportunities, in my opinion, is still Ethereum. Keenan, let's go. Crypto. So with crypto, right? I'm going to look up Bitcoin, right? And to see the chart. I back, think back crypto that mic right off. Now, back that mic off just a hair. You're distorting. Yeah, my bad. All right. So yeah. let me try this again. There you go. I'm going to try and look up Bitcoin really quickly, right? Because I want to just see. So we're at 44,000 per Bitcoin. We have a crazy level of resistance that has been confirmed not once, not twice, uh, almost three times at about 45,000, right? 44, 45. So we are in a level right now where there are sellers. But if we get into the 45,000, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bitcoin go up to 49,000. But that's the real test up there. If we get into the 50, then I can see us going back towards the all time highs, like the 67. Now, I want to just comment on something really quickly again, and it's this. I heard somebody say, or Josh was reading a comment, and he was talking about how, oh, you know, stocks are old, and then that's the, you know, crypto is the new thing, and this and that. Family, you can make a lot of money in crypto, but you will lose a lot of money being a fool. And I ain't saying you a fool as in you just, like, kind of dumb. I'm saying somebody is trying to make you a fool. And if you believe it, if you believe anything is one, everything, every... How do I even say this? If you think there's a one size fits all for investing, then you're going to be somebody else's fool. If you think crypto is going to be the way only or stocks is going to be the way only or real estate is going to be the only way that you could get money, you're going to be somebody else's fool and they will sell you these lies and they will get you to diamond hand everything to zero. Now, the reason I say this is because we've been doing this for a while. We've seen the ups and the downs. We've seen people on YouTube disappear. You know what I'm saying? We've seen people who couldn't handle the the 2020 recession, or not even a recession, COVID. We've seen people couldn't handle that. We've seen people couldn't handle 2022 during the bear market, right? What happened is so many people disappear, but they will sell you a dream and then straight up just disappear on you, really. So I say all of that to say, you got to make sure that you're not being somebody's fool. Why do you believe so much that bunk coin is the one that's going to turn into the next Bitcoin. Why do you believe so much that, I don't know, NVIDIA is going to be the next Apple? Why do you believe so much that it got to be this one thing? Rather than saying, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I know how to play all of them individually and I'm not married to them. Somebody asked me, Keenan, what does your hat mean? It means trade with the chart and not with your heart. And I wear this to just have a reminder for you because what will happen is you'll say, yo, I should hold on to this too long. And then you'll get too patient with your losing trades. And then you get too impatient with your winning trades. So now you diamond handing a loser and you selling out of a winner way too quick. 
and you wonder how you keep losing, it's because of these bad habits. It's because people is feeding you lies, to be honest. And you got to be able to see through them. And then you got to also be able to say to yourself, what lies am I not seeing through now? Because we all have blind spots, even to this day, myself, you, everybody here, we all have these blind spots. But when you are able to realize that you may have them, then and only then could you uncover it and really access your true wealth. Because I believe that me and everybody else watching this, you haven't even touched the amount of money that you are going to touch going forward. I believe that if you're willing to put in the work, this is only the beginning for you. But you got to be willing to put in the work. Hey, hey, I agree with that. Hey, listen, uh, I got to I got to do something. I got to do this. I got to do this. Guys, we got a celebrity in the house. Hey, and that's Kathy Schumann. Let me tell y'all something about Kathy. I'm going to take one minute. Kathy is uh, she is such an encourager of all of us. So you guys don't know, but she has been elevated to cousin Kathy. Everybody put hello, cousin Kathy in the chat. She is now cousin Kathy. All right. All right. We all know Kathy. Actually, we are all fans of Kathy. All right. Shout out to you, Kathy. So what I want to do is I want to talk about crypto. And I made a comment and I said that crypto is easier for me to make money. And it really is, period, easier to make money. And it's really as simple as this. It just takes time and patience. These are the four cycles, right? This is based off of the Wyckoff system. I know I messed that up like I messed up Toyota. All right. I know it's Toyota, but I say Toyota because I'm from the west side of Chicago. All right. So we have generally four phases, right? We have the accumulation phase, which we are still in with crypto, right? Then we have the markup. We have the distribution, all right? And sometimes that distribution just kind of trades sideways, right? But here's where it's hard. It, in the accumulation phase, it's easy because all you really have to do is accumulate. Some will buy higher and some will buy lower, right? The markup is where the greed comes in. The distribution is where denial comes in. And 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 Josh and I was talking about it. Even Josh and I was a, a little bit in denial on the last distribution phase, right? We were like, ah, oh, it's going to be a little more pump. Me and him was talking about that. Yeah. And, yeah. and right, Josh? And then yep. what happens? We got the markdown phase. When the markdown phase comes, you know it's there. So now, so now here's why I made the statement that it's actually easier to make money with crypto. And here's why. If you look at this, all right, these are the Bitcoin halvings, right? And, and so here, as you can see here, you have having one, having two, having three, and then four is yet to come, right? If you look, there's always what? We just looked at these phases, right? Accumulation, markup, distribution, markdown. So if you know where you are in the cycle, you can make money. So accumulation, right? And then we see the halving is happening right there, right? And then we got the markup, distribution, and then the markdown, we got the bottom. But if you could see here, the bottom of the first phase is still lower than the lows of the next phase. So if you get caught on the markdown phase, which is the sell off or whatever you want to call it, if you're patient, and I'm just talking about Bitcoin, if you're patient, it actually comes back. And then what happens? The having. Now, we are still here right now, all right? From the fourth having. We're still here. The having hasn't happened. But what happens after generally with Bitcoin after every having? You still have a pump up, right? So let's go back to the last one, all right? So we got the having here. I'll just do it here because this is in the way. All right, as you can see, on every having after the having comes the markup. Boom. See here? Having markup. See? Having markup. And so that's why I made the statement that it was actually easier to make money with crypto. And I don't mean all of the, uh, you know, all of the micro coins and all of that with just your layer ones, just Bitcoin in general, right? It's just easier because it's just knowing where you are. 
unlike a stock where you have to know the fundamentals. Do they have money? Uh, what is the CEO doing? All of those things, it's more difficult to see. Are they going to get earnings quarter over quarter? What's their forward guidance? What's their P.E. ratio? It's you it, with Bitcoin. If you simply know where you are in the cycle and you're a patient, you can make money easier with crypto. I race. I rest my case. Josh, you got something to say about that? Oh, uh, yeah. No, you're 100 percent right. I'm going to throw out a couple of facts that I've not talked about in regards to Bitcoin. And simultaneously, we're going to answer a comment here. Um, someone said, but Josh said that Bitcoin is losing interest. Uh, it is. You know, we, we had a six, uh, uh, 16,000 percent initial pump. The next one was 4,000. The last one was 600. And I'm projecting 400 for this one. It's becoming a mature asset. That's actually a good thing. And wow, look at that. It's becoming a mature asset in the same year and cycle that smart money investment came in with ETFs. That's one of the things that's going to cause it to become a mature asset. And 400% is a massive pump up. Now, when we look at those big long charts, uh, first of all, Larry's 100% right. We're still in accumulation. We've yet to enter markup. But I'll tell you that Bitcoin's gonna shake people loose because in, even though that chart of that Bitcoin has an upward markup appearance, I can tell you that every single time we've gone into the halving, we begin that move up, we actually get a 20% pullback each and every time after the halving. So you get this really strong spike up that's led to a 20% uh, drop off, and then it keeps going higher. And uh, so, you know, you're going to have to expect volatility and uh, you've got to get your trading strategies in place. What are you intending to do with crypto and these stocks? Because if you allow those moves to freak you out, if you allow the FUD regarding Coinbase to freak you out, if you listen to one of my videos and you think I'm telling you that it's over, but it's not really what I'm saying, you've got to get your strategy and your plan in place. Now, I highlighted Coinbase because it's not up at $180 right now we have the possibility of getting it down at $105. But I think that when we are in the peak of the Bitcoin markup phase, I think there's the possibility that it could be a $200 stock, a 200, even as high as a $240 stock. Now that's yet to be determined, but I'm thinking about my buy strategy now, and I'm thinking about where it's gonna be ahead. Guys, get your strategy together. And, you know, I, I know this is going to sound old and corny, but you got to buy red to be able to sell green. Yep, that's so true. Now, I'm going to answer this one because my answer to this, they say, is, they say, do you feel that the Bitcoin ETF are being approved, that the crypto cycles will be different? My answer is yes, I do. Now, uh, 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 all of us don't always agree on everything. I do believe it. So just like when I had the CEO of Mara on my show, for those of you that don't know, I had the CEO of the biggest Bitcoin mining company in the world on the show. And he and I agreed on that, that the the ETF will change, eventually change the cycles and they're going to start to change now. But he also said something uh, that if the retirement funds, some of these retirement funds added 1% of Bitcoin to their balance sheets, just 1%, the, 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 uh, that could really, really push Bitcoin up to an all-time new high, blow it out of the water. And just 1%. And those are some of the things that we have to look at fundamentally that are true, right? Now, um, I was going to put out a poll and ask, and I'm still going to put that poll out, if you had the option, if America said we're doing away with fiat currency, we're only going to have the CBDC. That's it. Right. And you have no choice. All your money in the bank. It is. It's, it's now digital. Right. They just convert everything over. Now. Your future investments, what would you do? Would you continue to put money in the bank knowing that they control everything? I'm ask, I'm going to ask you guys, or would that force you or push you into buying more crypto? Somebody asked that question. 
answer that question for me right now, because I'm going to put that poll out. If we go to the central bank's CBDC, meaning all of your money in the bank is now digital, meaning they can track everything you do with it, right? Do Will you continue to put money in your bank or would you start considering buying more cryptocurrency to be, quote unquote, a little off chain? I, I want to know the answer to that. All right, guys. Hey, we are uh, wrapping up really quick. This has been uh, really cool. Anybody, any of the you guys see any questions that someone asked uh, that you want to answer, either Keenan, Mo, uh, or Josh? Anybody see a question that was posed that you guys want to answer? All right, because I just want to get everything in. Go ahead. I got one last thing, Larry, and then I'll be done for the day. Um, there's a guy in here titled BitBoy, who I think is attempting to razz me a little bit uh, with some <laughs> of the comments. Um, he said, check out Josh's Mara and Riot predictions on his video titled Best Bitcoin Mining Stocks. And I am guessing, because uh, earlier he made a comment about uh, my prediction that Mara could get to five and that uh, Riot could get to 680. Well, I'm just, it is old, but he seems stuck on it. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about Mara and Riot and what I expect from them. Uh, for one, you know, things are different. Um, Mara came down to $7, so it came within $2 of my $5 potential. Of course, I said that it had the potential of getting there. I also pointed out in that video that if we got a close above the neckline, that we would shoot all the way up into the 30s. All of that prediction came to pass. Now, I'm imagining that uh, BitBoy, I don't think he's the real BitBoy. He's probably just, uh, it's probably just his handle. He probably uh, said, you know what? I ain't going to buy this thing. I'm not going to buy it till it hits Joshua's $5. And he probably upset with me and he got burned. But if he continued to watch the videos, when I noticed the breakout pattern in Mara and Riot between eight and $9, I made another video and said, guys, I bought a thousand shares of Mara. I bought 2000 shares of Riot and this thing is going higher. I notified the Discord. So, you know, I, I understand people get caught up on, um, you know, they get caught up on moments. They latch onto some idea, but you know, the market is extremely liquid and none of us can influence it. And you have to be able to shift and change. So commenting on Mara and Riot going forward, how low can they go? In one of my recent videos, I still see significant major support down at the 9.30 to the 10.30 area for Mara. Now, the only way I see that being hit is if Bitcoin reaches 31 to 32, okay? And again, I don't think it would be down there long. It would just be to test structural support and to be back in a move up. Someone asked a comment, they said, should we be DCAing into the miners? Well, I, you know, none of us are giving you stock advice. Larry showed you a portfolio of DCA. And, I, I, and, and I'm going to show it again when you finish. Yeah. And, you know, he showed you a portfolio of DCAing uh, during red periods rather than getting caught up with the FOMO and buying that, uh, that forming wick at the top of the candle. And it proved to be very successful. We are we're pulling back, and so for the entire time frame of where Mars, uh, I, somebody could shout out where it's at right now, but but you know between 18 and 950. If you were interested in being a long-term investor in Mara, the miners likely will do better in the future. They'll do better in the markup phase of Bitcoin. And at bare minimum, we might go back up and make a double top at $32. And so if you are buying between 18 all the way down to 950, and we have that moment, there's your strategy. And if you get lower and lower into the regions, which I'm calling are a possibility, then you increase your buys, just like Larry said earlier yeah. in this video. He said, if it goes up, I'm gonna buy this many shares. If it goes down, I'm gonna double it. These right. are gems that are getting laid out here, guys. But those are my thoughts on uh, Mara and Riot. Listen, I'm gonna show you guys something right now. I'm just gonna be, this is this is what I'm I'm doing. All right. Let's see if I can pull that up. All right. So if you can see here. All right. Let's just take out DWAC. Right now. Most people are all red. A lot of people are all red. 
All right. You can see I got Clean Spark, Wolf, Riot, uh, MicroStrategy, Mara, Bit Farms. As you can see, I'm I'm still green and I'm flat and, and, and I don't want it to be. I don't want to be really green right now because I know that there is more of a chance of a cool off uh, before the having than a run up long from here into the having. There is a, a stair step down. Now. I'm going to, I'm just showing you guys my portfolio in real time. Now, as you could see, if you look to the left, what I plan on doing is having $2,500 each. So now on automatic, I got Riot, Mara, and Clean Spark every day. Desaying a little bit, right? I don't want these to be uh, up green a lot right now. And you say, are you kidding me? I really don't. Now you can see what they're up for today. And you can see I'm pretty much flat. Clean Spark had a nice bounce today. But even with the downdraft, I'm still up 25%, right? So what I'm saying to you guys is, just like Josh said, it's easy for me. When these tank 8% or more, I buy a little more, right? That's, that's all I do. And when they run up like 10%, I, I don't buy nothing. They run down double digits, I buy more. They run back up double digits like they've been doing. I don't buy nothing, right? And that's what I'm doing. Or oh, I buy a little. I am buying. I, I only buy a little. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to play this until. Now, here's what I believe. I believe that Mara will hit. The, uh, I, I believe that Mara will su surpass the $40 range. I do. I believe that all of these that I'm putting money in will 4X. And at some point, now me personally, by the time the having gets here, I'm going in heavy into all of them. And that's what I'm going to do right at the having. And then I'm going to stop and I'm going to hold. And I'm I'm probably going to hold into 2025. And I plan on having a minimum of twenty five hundred dollars in each. And I expect all of them to quadruple. I expect these to buy me another Bitcoin. But it's just a game of patience for me right now. And it's easy because I'm not worried about these. All right. So I just want to be clear on what I'm doing. Now, you could wait and just buy them at a lower range. But I don't believe it's all green valleys from here on out. And it's just going to run straight up. No, I actually believe that's coming down even more towards the having. But after the having, I believe it's going to take off. All right, good people. We are there. One hour. Man, this has been an hour and two minutes. This has been great. Hey, let's start with some uh, goodbyes. Mo, since we got you at the top, go ahead and say goodbye. You know what? Give them a station break first. Tell them about what they need to do with the links and the like and all of that. And then say your goodbye. You know it, Uncle Larry. I got to say it once again. Thank you for having me on. And if you guys haven't done it, get over to the Stock Squad link down below. You can come on over, check out what we're doing. We share our alerts. And the best thing is, it's just a great community, a positive community. And that's what I would highly recommend. Surround yourself with like-minded people. Take it to the next level. You have some ideas that maybe you weren't thinking about. And you can throw your ideas out there and see what others think about. So it's been a great show. I appreciate it. I've learned a lot. Hopefully, we all learned a lot. And I'm looking forward to the next time we do this in two weeks. Thanks again, Larry, for having me on. All righty, all righty. Keenan. I had to unmute myself, but I want to say everybody again, you know how we always talk about earnings and we talk about, you know, this stock is on fire right now. And I tell you, how do we know? It's because we're using platforms, whether you use a free platform online, most of them are free, right? Or different apps or whatever. Make sure that you are putting yourself in circles or at least having the opportunity to get the information to come to you. So you could actually be ahead of the plays. When you hear AMD is running up or NVIDIA is running up or Bunk Coin is running up or Disney had their earnings, some people are surprised that Disney is running up or that Disney is even moving abnormally because they didn't know the earnings was coming up. You got to make sure that you're staying in tune and keep your ear to the ground, family. But again, I see you in the stock squad so that you could be a part of our community and we can show you everything that we know. See you over there. The link is in the description. Josh. 
Hey, you know, I just want to say it's great to be part of this community. I love working with these guys. I wish we had time to answer every single question in the chat. Uh, the only suggestion I would make is check us out into the Discord. There's a link in the top pinned comment, and we can answer more questions there. So peace and blessings to you guys. Thanks for having me on today, Larry. Hey, this has been great. My brother, Duran Corbin, my brother, my brother. <laughs> Say say what's up, Josh. <laughs> hey, Duran, how you doing, man? Good to good to see you here. Hey, as always, guys. Hey, it's it's been great. Uh, we work hard to keep you guys fed. Uh, these gentlemen all have. Listen, let me say this. Let me go over this one more time. I just want to show you guys something, right? For those of you that's not in a Discord, come and join us. All right, that's where we give our good plays, right? in real time so we literally snapshot it and then we come back and we show you guys where we got in and where we got out right so now i also want to tell you guys that are following me to follow all of these uh these gentlemen we got stocks with josh we got keen and grace and we got stock modes and i'm also going to say this i know a lot of you guys watching are in the patreon uh, someone just said they're a proud member of the Patreon, the Discord, right? But uh, I want you guys that know that you should be getting more than I want you guys to check out our individual classes also because there's more. I just purchased two more classes. I literally yesterday just purchased two more classes because I'm not I'm not uh, posting for a short period on Tuesdays and, and uh, Thursdays. I'm just posting Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays because I want to be better. But we have things that will help you guys make money. Um, I have Stock Up You. That's going to help you make money and show you the overall stock market. Stock Mo has a course that he has his bread recipes showing you guys how to trade, how to do options. Keenan has his class on, on options. Josh is working on something. We all have other things that we, uh, um, uh, that once you are in the discord, that's going to help you to make money. So first join the discord, get in, get good, get acclimated, and then always continue to educate yourself. Always invest in yourself first. All right. We're going to leave it right there. Good people. We love you guys. I just had to say that at the end, always invest in yourself. Even at our level, we still continue to learn. Love you guys. Make sure you hit the like button. Check out all the links below, especially come and join the Stock Squad. Peace.